After her run on Angels, Julie joined the cast of the period drama TV series, Poldark. Flipping characters, Julie transformed from the ethereal and kind Nurse Longhurst to the coquettish seductress, Ruella. Not the bad girl. Um, yeah, uh, so Poldark, this was the original series. I know it's just been remade. Um, and I played Rowella, who was a really nasty, scheming little witch. She had an affair with her sister's husband, her brother-in-law, and then blackmailed him. And she was a, she was a minx. About you and me. She knows. What is there to know? Oh, my girl, my dear, dear girl. Oh. And you know what's interesting is you've often compared Rowella to your iconic character Veruca. I've noticed that in your book. Were you aware of the parallels between those two characters at the time, or did that was that something you just realized later? I think I realized it later, but I I, I don't know why because after so I've had a run of these bad girls. So I had Veruca, then I played Arabella in Mother Makes Three, who was another snotty little brat, and then a play called The Intruders for Anglia TV, where I broke into a house. Then there was Within These Walls. So I you know I get all these bad girls. <laughs> How do you know he will marry you? He asked me last week. And you said? That I could not do so without your consent and that of my mother. And I did not think that would be forthcoming. Why not? He is of lowly birth. His father is a carpenter. Lonely indeed. Beggars cannot be choosers. One of the main people that you shared many scenes with was Christopher Beings. What was it like working with him? Well, Biggins. Biggins, excuse me. Yeah, B Christopher Biggins, we all call him Biggins. A, a great character. We became great friends. Um, he's larger than life. He won our um, I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here in the Jungle thing. I did panto with him several times. And when I got married, he gave me away. I hope you will not be angry. I am pregnant. What are we to do? We? It has nothing to do with me. With whom have you contracted this? Vicar! Osborne, there has been no one else, I swear. How dare you involve me in your misdeeds? Why, half the men in the parish may be the father. That's not true, that's not true! If the truth were known, the desire to implicate me has been behind this unfortunate affair from the beginning. And you know what's interesting is that you said, like, you know, your character Rowella, she was a bad, nasty girl, but I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm being bit of a devil's advocate here, but I don't know if she's really as bad as she's been made out to be. Like, she, I like to think maybe her situation is a little bit sympathetic because she was young and she got attention from a male figure and then all of a sudden, like, you know, she did I think you're being generous. Yeah. She went after him. She was naughty. Yeah. She pursued him. Will you come again? Perhaps one evening when Arthur is at home. He's here every night except Thursdays. Thursdays he always visits his parents and he's never home till late. I'll remember. Give my fondest affections to my sister, will you? Mm. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're being too forgiving. I think she was... She deserved everything she got. <laughs> it was all a terrible mistake. A mistake. I was very stupid. Being inexperienced in these matters, it appears that I mistook the signs. I was not with child after all. Not with child? I'm deeply grieved that I caused you such trouble. But in the end, it has all turned out for the best, hasn't it? Now, did you and the other actors have to, like, you know, really um, work extra hard in, like, you know, changing your speeches or something to, like, you know, make it sound like you were from a different era? Because that is a practice that is often done in period films. Yes, I think not so much that, but there were... Uh, my character didn't have a Cornish accent, which is quite complex, but several of the others did and had to have dialect coaching for the Cornish accent, so happily I didn't have to do that. Kevin McNally, I believe he... Was he a Cornish guy in that? I can't Kevin McNally is in Pirates of the Caribbean. Trudy Styler was in that, who's now married to Sting. Um, so yeah, but we had a lot of fun filming in Cornwall. It was beautiful down there. And another thing that costume dramas are known for are their very opulent and at times very uncomfortable costumes. Oh, yeah. Did you suffer any discomfort? Oh yes, in loads of productions I've done. You know, corsets are not comfortable and they're hot. <laughs> and you're filming on location in these woolen clothes with layers and layers and layers. And you're just like, ugh, you know, it's just lunch. Oh, I couldn't, I can't fit anything in, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, that was also, I noticed, um, the first time that you um, changed up your hair too, they gave you bangs for that, right? They did, they did. Um, I, it was, quite a lot was my hair, but I had a big piece on at the back, so that was, yeah. 
Aside from Willy Wonka, do you think people remember you more for Poldark or for Angels, would you say? Ooh. Probably Angels, I think. It ran for three years, so... <laughs> After the success of Poldark, Julie was cast in another costume drama, Mill and the Floss. Almost the complete opposite of Rowella, Julie's character Lucy was more of an Amy March from Little Women meets Melanie Hamilton from Gone with the Wind. So that's uh, based on a, a George Eliot novel, um, but beautiful costumes. And I remember we had a ball scene and I, they didn't have a costume, you know, often you hire costumes, but this one, they made it for me and it was beautiful pink silk. It was absolutely, that was the best costume I think I've ever had, almost. Wow. And you, you um, played uh, John Mulder Brown's love interest, yes. right? Yes. What was it like working with him? Well, I'd had a crush on him since I was about 12 years old. Oh. So that was, uh, yeah, that was something. Very handsome young man. You have such confidence in your second sight, I shall refrain from destroying it. And Lucy, dearest, please don't be sharp with me. You can be very cruel sometimes. Forgive me, I'm begging. <laughs> He'd done a lot of movies at the time. Was it a film called The Deep End or something with Susan Yes, George? with Jane Asher. Jane Asher, right. Yes. But I'd had a crush on him since I was a kid. Aww. So that was quite nice. It was like a dream come true for oh, you. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Have you stayed in touch with him? I haven't, although he kind of surfaced via social media recently, and I think he, he teaches at a drama school in Brighton or something, so maybe I'll get in touch. With the 1970s coming to a close, and with three successful television shows under her belt, Julie kept busy working on various film and television projects, even serving as a spokesmodel for Kame Soap. But her next big break came in the 1984 television film remake of the classic French love story, Camille. Although her part wasn't particularly large, it certainly was a scene stealer. Well, I remember the cast, for, first of all. It was an amazing cast. So it was Colin Firth, you may have heard of him. Yes. Uh, Greta Skaki, uh, Sir John Gielgud, Billy Whitelaw, and Ben Kingsley. Uh, masses of people and we filmed on location in in just outside Paris we were filming near Versailles hot costumes corsets again <laughs> um, but I remember sharing a trailer with uh, Billy Whitelaw we had our trailer together and there was a lot of downtime and there was a little knock on the door and we were in our trailer and she was telling me stories about Harold Pinter and all sorts of things it was a great afternoon the knock on the door we opened the door to our trailer and it was Sir John Gielgud who said do you mind if I come in? I'm awfully bored on my own. <laughs> so he came in. I had this bizarre afternoon with Sir John Gielgud and Billy Whitelaw telling all their stories. I think I was so in awe of it, I can't even remember what they were saying now, but it's a shame. I have a terrible memory. <laughs> and knowing that this was like, you know, another film adaptation of such a popular romance novel, and um, there were other, uh, you know, versions of the film you had to like, you know, compete with, did you feel pressure at all in that you felt like you were competing with such a classic film? Uh, there'd been sufficient distance, I think, because, you know, Greta Garbo is the famous one and, you know, you can't beat that. But this was a different take on it all. No, don't leave me. Marguerite, come back. Bye. version of Camille has that you know other versions don't do you think? I don't think ours was a very good version. Really? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know. D mm. Take a look at this! <laughs> they should have hung the artist, never mind the painting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it had a great cost. I personally love it. You like it, okay. Yeah, because, you know, not just because you, because obviously, you know, we get Colin Firth yeah. leading the film, and he's such a big, tremendous actor, and, you know, I remember him from uh, Valmont. Do you remember yes, that? Yes. That was kind of like another version of uh, Dangerous Liaisons. Yeah. You know, his characters in those films are somewhat different, but, mm. like, you know, they're somewhat similar. This was pre-Colin Firth being really Colin Firth, so, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he was lovely and charming. Not many women can say that they had dinner on the Champs-Élysées with Colin Firth. Yeah, I was just about to ask, you know, was he as charming as he's yeah, always been made out to lovely. be? <laughs> Throughout the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, Julie's acting career continued to prosper, 
and soon she garnered a whole new cult following for her role in Willy Wonka. And after nearly 40 years of film, television, and theater work, Julie left the entertainment industry to work in the medical field, where she now dedicates her time to counseling families and children, and occasionally attending conventions for all of us Wonka fans. But before saying goodbye, I just had to ask Julie one final question about a special someone. One last question, and this is something I'd like to know personally. You met Lynn Frederick once, right? Yes, Can I you did. tell us about that? Yeah, I met Lynn. Um, I was at uh, my stage school, Barbara Speaks Stage School, and we used to do end of term shows and uh, cups were awarded, you know, trophies. And I think I, it was either the best singing or the best drama, I can't remember which one I won, but she awarded me my, my trophy. Aww. <laughs> For updates on Julie's upcoming tours and appearances, visit her official website, juliedoncole.co.uk You can also follow Julie on social media. Links in the description below. Thank you all for watching.